Hey guys, and with a fresh wave of new iPhones, there are new features to be found. So in this video, I'm gonna go over some of my top tips and tricks to try on the iPhone 12 and the 12 Pro and other devices in the 12 series. But if you have an older phone running iOS 14, some of these will apply to you as well. So let's dive in. Now, before we get started properly, our first suggestion is from our sponsors for this video, iBlazon, and it's get yourself a decent case iBlazon makes some of the best value for money cases on the market, offering great protection plus a well-made and durable case. This one in particular, the Ares, is 20 foot drop test certified, but in a case that's not overly bulky and gives you easy access to your buttons while also protecting your screen with a built-in protective film, and a rubberized outer bumper for absorbing impact just in case you drop it. It's one of my favorites from their range, but there are plenty of others to consider, including the stylish Cosmo Collection. You can find them by searching iPhone 12 case by iBlazon on Amazon or using the link in the description box below. Now our first tip is tapping the back for a screenshot. Now Apple's iOS software has long been the source of many great accessibility features. And one of the most recent ones is the ability to tap the back of your phone to launch specific functions, like taking a screenshot. To enable it, go to settings, then find accessibility. Now select touch and scroll down to back tap. Choose either double or triple tap and then select screenshot. Now when you double or triple tap the back of your phone, it'll grab a screenshot. Now one other cool one to choose is notification center, so you can double or triple tap quickly to get to notifications. It's really handy. Number two is changing your default browser and email apps. Now one new feature in the latest software is being able to use other apps as default for things like your internet browser. So if you want to use Chrome as your default browser as an example, Download Chrome from the App Store. Now open Settings and find Chrome in the list. Tap it and then choose Default Browser from the next screen. And then choose Chrome on the following one. Now Chrome will be your default browser. And you can do the same with email apps. So if you want to use Spark or Gmail instead of Mail as your default, you go to Settings, find your third-party email app, tap on it, then choose Default Mail app on the next screen. And then choose Spark or whatever email app you're using. Number three is stopping new apps from appearing on your home screen when you download them. Now with iOS 14, we now have an app library, which is great for storing those apps you don't use all the time. But by default, whenever you download a new app, it appears on your home screen. If you'd rather it went straight to app library instead and didn't fill up your home screen, go to settings, home screen, then choose app library only under the newly downloaded apps section. Next on our list is seeing all your apps in a list. Now by default, App Library automatically sorts apps into folders for you, but if you'd rather see them in a long list, you can just drag down on the screen in App Library. Now all your apps are listed alphabetically. You can search using the search bar at the top if you want to, or scroll quickly to the app you want by tapping the tiny corresponding first letter in the column down the right side. You can also scroll up and down this column too. Fifth is adding widgets to your home screen. Now, iOS 14 has changed quite a lot by allowing you to add widgets to your home screen. To add them, simply long press on an app icon on your home screen and select Edit Home Screen. Now tap the plus sign in the top corner and find the widget you want to add. To see all the apps that support them that you have installed, scroll all the way down to the bottom and select the app from the list. Now choose which size widget and what information you want and then tap Add Widget on the button that appears in the pop-up window. If you want a more in-depth guide on how to use widgets to create your own custom aesthetic, check out our other video where we go over that process. Next is creating custom widget smart stacks. Now, one of the widgets you can create is a smart stack, which lets you scroll through multiple widgets in the same small widget space on the screen. To create your own, all you have to do is drag and drop individual widgets on top of each other. Now they can be set to auto rotate or you can scroll through them manually. Number seven is getting rid of entire home screens. Now long press a blank area on your home screen and now tap the page indicator on the bottom of the screen. Tap the tick or the check mark at the bottom of each screen you want to move or hide. It doesn't delete the apps, it just hides them away in the app library. Number eight is creating a custom dark mode schedule. Now dark mode has been around for a little while now and it's easy to activate by heading into settings and then display and choosing the dark mode option at the top. But if you want to activate it automatically to a custom schedule set by you, toggle the automatic option on and then tap on the options tab beneath that. On the next screen, select custom schedule and set a light and dark time and then it'll activate and deactivate when you've set it to. Number nine is customizing your today view. 
As well as having widgets on your home screen, there's the Today view that lives to the left of your first home screen. To customize this, just swipe over to it and then scroll down until you see the edit button. Tap that and now you can remove any widgets from the top. If you want to edit the window at the bottom of the screen that has the old style widgets in it, tap customize at the bottom of the screen to add and remove widgets from there. Next is searching for emoji. Using Apple's built-in keyboard, you can now search for emoji easily. Just launch the emoji keyboard and tap the search emoji field to search for sausages or chocolate or winky faces or whatever else you're after. Next is faking eye contact in FaceTime. So this is a cool trick. Now if you head to settings and FaceTime, then eye contact, you can enable that toggle and whenever you're making FaceTime calls, it'll make it look like you're looking directly at the camera or the person on the other side of the call, even when you're looking at the screen. Switching over to camera now and number 12 is bringing up camera controls. Now when you load up the camera app, the controls are quite basic, but if you want to, there are others hidden and easily revealed. Launch the camera app, and then if you're holding it vertically, swipe up on the camera shooting modes row. Now you'll get a whole set of new controls, which changes depending on which shooting mode you're in. If you're in regular stills mode, you'll see a night mode option, live photos, photo aspect ratio, and exposure as well as flash. To change exposure, for instance, just tap on the little plus minus sign and then slide the slider on screen until it's exposed the way that you want. Thirteenth tip is quickly scanning a QR code. Now, if you want to quickly launch the phone's inbuilt QR code scanning feature, just swipe down from the top right of the screen to launch control center and here you'll find a small QR code button. Tap on it and you can quickly scan a code. Last but not least is using your volume up button as a burst photo button. Just head to settings and camera and toggle on the use volume up for burst option. And when you hold the volume up button down in photo mode, it'll automatically shoot a burst of photos. So there you have it, 14 cool tips and tricks to try. We hope you found this useful and discovered a few new things that you didn't know were there before. If you like this video, please do leave a thumbs up. It helps us a lot and hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss any further videos. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton on social media, and I'll see you again soon.